Welcome back to Brent's Hang, I'm Brent Barnett. Today's episode, we're gonna take a little bit of a left turn. We're gonna talk about tuning drums instead of mounting them. Crazy, right? Who would have thought? So I've got a special guest coming in today. His name is John Nicholson, and he is a studio drum tech for a lot of major recording sessions here in town. And I mean, he does everything from studio to live work, and he's worked on some of the, with some of the biggest bands in the world and some of the biggest records in the world. And he's gonna give us his methods on tuning and some of his little tips and tricks on how he gets some of the best sounds out of drums. Hey everyone, so we are here today in North Hollywood at Amp Rehearsal Studios, and um, I'm here with my friend John Nicholson, who's a drummer and drum tech extraordinaire to the stars, mm. to the stars, amazing at his job. And we're talking tuning drums today, which is a little bit different from all the hardware that we always talk about. So we decided to take a little bit of a left turn. So there's many methods to tuning drums, and John's method is just one method, and it may work for you, it may not. He's got a lot of experience tuning in the, in the studio professionally with well-known artists. And um, so let's, uh, let's talk about it. John, dude, thank you so much for coming out today. Good to be here. Do you do a lot more live performances or more uh, studio recordings? I do more studio stuff for sure. Uh, for the past uh, 12 years, it's been mm, probably close to 50 albums a year in the studio. Who are some of the artists that you've worked with? It's been a lot of records over the, over the past bunch of years, but uh, I mentioned Tool before and uh, like Alice in Chains and uh, The Deptones and uh, Evanescence and Chris Daughtry and there's been a lot of bands. What is What method do you like to use a lot when you tune? I'm a, uh, fully the ear method. I'm all about really listening to what you're doing. Uh, I, I'm not necessarily a tap by the lugs guy to get everything exactly even. For me, I'm usually shooting for a tone that has the most sustain and the most roundness to it. If you're tuning your drums high, like like Tony Williams or Billy Cobham back in the day, uh, uh, for more cutting, uh, and those guys are playing rim shots even on the tom toms and stuff. It's just different, uh, different ways of tuning and, and different approaches. But typically, for modern rock recordings, uh, I go for the spot that, uh, to my ear, sounds the best in the most uh, pure tone. Can you show us like how you how you do some tuning? I absolutely will. Awesome. Sure. We've got a fine Gresh drum set here, uh, 10, 12, 16, 22, uh, and I'm going to tune them up how I would do it, and you can get an idea, and uh, we'll go from there. See what kind of magic I do here. It's coming out. I like how easy these drums are to get the heads on. I like to get the head on just, just kind of finger tight with the screws, and as I'm tightening over here, I like to hold down this side a little bit, just so it's, it's still... Once again, I'm, my first time around, I'm not tightening it down as much as I'm just kind of getting them finger tight. Uh, for me, the big deal with all this is getting these even. Uh, you can hear the glue cracking a little bit. That probably means we're getting close. Uh, and I haven't even tapped on the lugs here yet, uh, but I certainly have a, a good idea of what the tension should feel like on here. Kind of. Been doing it the same way for so long. I'm kind of a, a glue breaker once it gets on there. Uh, I don't uh, break the glue on the Evans heads or the or the Aquarian, uh, but for whatever reason, I think the the Remos kind of they seem to form to the the shell a little better after you break the glue. It seems like to me uh, the Evans heads, if you do this to them, they just die. I don't know if I you've noticed that before, but. I've been in a few situations where I learned the hard way and kind of did it to them, and all of a sudden the drums, I like crushed them. Okay, we're going to put some other new heads on there. Um, same thing on the bottom. I'm kind of like a feel guy. Um, I can feel these a little loose. Maybe it's my, my body weight, but uh, I kind of try to do the same thing. I try to be really consistent about all this stuff. Um, and... That's pretty much where I would start. I would just kind of do this. This is on there. I would I would stick with what I got now. Typically, I would put the strum on the kit and I would tune it the rest of the way. This is our 12-inch tom, 
And looking at this right off the bat, I can see a couple pits in here. That for sure changes the sound. Um, I can tell you, if I was checking any heads to see if they were bad or good, even if I didn't see pits from this angle, I would be inclined to turn it over and look at this head through the bottom of the drum, and then you can really see where there's pits. Um, just a little thing, that's how I check the heads, because sometimes it may look like it's fine, but they can be really pitted, and you can't see it from the top. Once again, it's like a knot. Over, overthinking all this too much. And uh, in the end, if I bring these over to the drum set and they sound weird, I mean, I'll work on them a little bit. However, there is just sometimes all drums don't sound perfect. And sometimes the whole kit doesn't always match. And I think that's why there's certain instruments that uh, are like go-tos in the studio sometimes. And I, uh, I tell you another uh, big variable from day to day is that uh, Sometimes if you leave a drum in a room overnight, it sounds better the next day. I don't know why that is. That's Either it's uh, uh, temperature of the room or barometric pressure or whatever is happening, but I like to call it rumin rumination. But it does change. You come back the next day and they sound better. I don't know what it is. Snare drum, here we go. Uh, we have a coated ambassador on here. Uh, once again, it's a feel thing for me. Um, I can tell you that I notice a lot of guys, for whatever reason, a lot of guys really crank the strainer, like really crank it to the point where it's choking a lot of the time. I'm more of like a keep it, not ridiculously loose, but at least loose enough so you can, so it's sensitive and you can do like a little bit of a roll on it without it sounding all choky and weird, but. Now this thing's got a lot of ring on it, but um, I bet it's gonna sound good. Seems like it's going to sound good already. Cool. Floor Tom. Um, I can tell you another question that I get a lot is uh, people asking about the relation between the, the bottom head and the top head and where they like to tune them. Um, I think typically if you look online and there's any number of tuning videos on there, I think most people that I see that are doing it online like to tune the bottom head like slightly tighter, like a whole step. Um, I have found that for me, when I make them tighter, it tends to have the, the dive a little bit, the boo, mm -hmm. bottom head kind of. Do. So I typically, and it's not even that I think about it that much, but I typically tune the bottom head a half step lower. And that actually uh, makes an even note, like a straight note, uh, as opposed to the dive. Some people like the brrr and that whole thing, and they think it's a whole lot of character, and, and they go for that, and if they want that, I do it. But just an observation that I know there's a lot of talk about people that, about tuning and the, and the bottom heads, but I generally go a hair lower on the bottom head, on the tom. Snare drum a little bit higher, but tom, uh, and I think I, I've ended up there so many times as a result of just really listening to it and, and really not, maybe not listening to the relation between the top and the bottom heads as much as trying to get some weird overtone out and just messing with the bottom head till things seem, seem, to, seem to sound right. And then checking it and realizing that it was actually lower how my ear liked it better. So right. it's kind of a... Same thing here, I like to get them on really even. I like to start over here. I like to hold this side so I can actually feel when this one starts touching the rim, you can actually feel it. I like to hold it and just kind of keep it even. Uh, I know some people are gonna hate me out there. I do not do the cross tuning method. I go straight around so I can feel it. I don't think there's anything wrong with the cross tuning method. I think it, it takes a little bit more time sometimes, but uh, I think there's lots, lots of ways to skin a cat. Everybody's kind of got their own way of doing it. But once again, and I said this earlier, I don't want to come off as being like the expert and the, the guy that knows everything about everything because I don't, and I'm, and I'm constantly learning something new. Um, so I think the key is to be flexible with all this stuff. A lot of settling in there. You can tell these drums are going to sound great.
funny enough, I, I kind of get I get to tune drums on rock sessions to how I like to tune them though most of the time. How I would tune them if I was doing it myself, which is lucky. It's fortunate that the spot that other people like uh, is sometimes the one that I like, and it's good, so it's easy to get there. As opposed to if I liked it and, and they, they hated it every time, I'd be like, well, I don't know how to backtrack to... That's like a half step lower on the bottom. It does sound cool. I guess we'll see how this thing, how this thing holds up. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. John was amazing. He came in here and broke down what is a very, you know, can be a lengthy discussion in just a few short minutes. And um, it's just one method. It's not the only method. It's one method that works for him and can work for you. And um, don't be afraid to try some of the, uh, some of the little tricks that he, uh, he gave us. He gave us some little inside tips on how he works in the studio with it and can actually help your drumming at home if you're recording drums at home. Maybe you're not, maybe you're just playing out live, but these techniques will help you to make your drum sound better live as well. Anyways, see you next time, thanks a lot.